Good afternoon, everyone. I will be doing this lecture in, or the introduction in English as we are recording this, and we'll be showing it on the uh, on the internet. That's where people are that make computer games. Uh, my name is Artmar. Uh, I am a producer at CCP Games. My role is to make sure that computer games get produced. So that means I I have input into pretty much every aspect of the production of video games. Whether it be game design, quality assurance, software development, etc. Uh, so I was going to open up this first IGI workshop by talking a bit about sort of roughly how we at CCP uh, uh, produce our video games uh, and hopefully touch on some issues that can help you guys that are uh, trying to produce or to making concepts and making game designs on your games. Uh, the first thing we uh, do usually is you have to start off with, with a clear vision. Hydra. I'm for Hydra. So the first thing you have to do is you have to start off with a clear vision. Uh, the vision has to, has to have goals as well. So when you, have, when you start off and then you make a concept of game, you have to know what it is that you're trying to achieve. Are you making a first person shooter? Are you making uh, a flash based sort of uh, social interactive game like, like Farmville, for example, or, or Restaurant City? Uh, are you trying to make an, an educational game? If it's an educational game, what is the purpose of the game? Is it to teach, uh, language, math, etc.? It's better to have a clear focus when you head off, uh, because otherwise you can you go in all different directions and you realize a year down the line that you've made you know a, a metric ton of code, you've made a lot of prototypes, and you still don't have a concrete product in your hands. So head off, start off with with a vision, have clear goals where you want to take the game, and then you can uh, then you can sort of go from there. That's that's the actual pre requirement of making a video. So um, after you've made after you have a vision, after you you put down your goals, and you should have your goals in a sort of a chapter, and the chapter should be what you go back to after every decision on a uh, design decision or an implementation decision and check, uh, does this comply with the chapter that we made in the beginning? Because it's very easy to start making a computer game and you think you're on target and you think you're doing what you set out to do. But uh, as time goes by, uh, the objective becomes fuzzier. So it's good to have it written down in the beginning, what is the goal of the game? And then as you make implementations and design decisions, always balance them off of the chapter. Are we doing it the way we initially wanted to? And if you find out that you're doing more and more uh, changes that do not comply with the chapter, maybe you have to redraw the chapter. But then again, that's basically going back and saying we're making a completely different game. Once you have have these things, once you understand what it is that you want to be doing, uh, uh, it is very beneficial to go into a brainstorming session. Uh, a brainstorming session can be conducted easily by uh, getting like a group of people that work on the game, or even a group of people that don't work on the game, into a room, maybe five or six people, uh, give them, sort of explain to them the chapter, what the, what the main purpose of the game is, and then basically have them throw out ideas. And the rules in a brainstorming session are there are no bad ideas. The bad ideas come later. Uh, so you, you write down all the ideas you get, like every single idea, on a post-it, and you put the post-it somewhere, on a wall, whatever. You time box it for maybe an hour, and after the hour has lapsed, you stop. Uh, then you have to take all the post-its and harvest them. So that's when the bad ideas start cropping up. So you, you go through the post-its, you check out uh, whatever ideas everyone has been having. Some of them are probably good, some of them are probably bad, some of them are probably horrible and, and, and should never be written down again. But the, the main part is that doing a brainstorming session with other people gives you different perspectives on the game. It allows you to solve problems that you've been looking at for a while, maybe in a different manner, or even uh, circumvent the problem completely by doing a design change. And that can often be uh, a problem that designers uh, face. If they've been working alone on a problem that they see uh, for a long time, 
uh, they sort of forget to take a step back and look at maybe if a problem is caused by like something that shouldn't need a solution, but rather you should try to circumvent the problem altogether. It's called uh, closet gnome syndrome. So it's good to get as much perspective as you can when you're creating a game from people you trust. Uh, after doing this, I mean, this is a process that can take a week, it can take a couple of weeks, it can take a couple of hours, for that matter. But once you have these basic concepts of how you're going to develop the game, you can, uh, then I would, I would say you should not start coding anything until that. Uh, but, but once you have charters and once you have design decisions, once you have brainstorming sessions, that's when you should start prototyping. And you should start prototyping early and you should do it often. So prototyping is basically uh, laying down the design idea that you have into, uh, it doesn't even have to be in an electronic format. It can be in, uh, in a board game style of, of a game. So you basically just make a few cardboard cutouts or, or use dice or whatever just to figure out if the core playability of the, of the game is fun or if it's what you intend it to be. If you want to make a boring game, maybe you want to make sure it's boring. But, uh, but uh, the key is to prototype because things may look really good on paper and they usually do because you can write all sorts of text to make anything look really good. But as soon as you start prototyping, as soon as you start playing what it is you're designing, uh, it's often when problems crop up, when you realize that, wow, this is like we're, we're handling this all wrong. This shouldn't be turn-based, it should be real-time or, or vice versa. So prototyping and concepting is very important early on in the process. Once you've done that, you can go into the full production mode of the game itself. So I'm realizing I've done this in the completely wrong order. I should have started out by, like, as I did, welcoming you to the IGI workshop and, and explaining that we're here making games. I hope no one's in the wrong lecture. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to spend like five minutes about talking about uh, the IGI and, and sort of the purposes of these workshops. So I'm not going to tell you to forget everything I just said, like keep it somewhere safe. Remember it later. So uh, the, the purpose of these workshops is basically to get together people uh, that, have inter that have an interest in making computer games, that have an idea or that have uh, the implementation of the skills required, be, whether it be uh, art production, software production, or, or game design to bring them together and to give you all an opportunity to uh, sort of work on your ideas in a structured environment. And we're offering and providing here a structured environment, uh, giving, uh, there will be industry professionals giving talks, people that have been in the gaming industry for many years, people that have been in the software, software industry, Takatlan. <laughs> people that have been in the software development industry for, for many years. And the goal of this is basically to, to allow you guys to pick their brains, for them to share information, and for you to pick their brains on, on ideas, be it implementation or design. Uh, it's also for the people in the contest uh, to give them a chance to meet up, and maybe even to form groups. We do encourage that you sort of team up some of you may have great design ideas. Some of you may be interested in programming games but don't have any ideas yet. We do encourage you all to chat a bit amongst yourselves after the presentations to sort of figure out if you can team up and, and deliver a more complete product. Although we will of course be taking uh, submissions that contain only game design or, or rough ideas. So, welcome. That was like memento. <laughs> Picked the wrong order, but that's fine. Uh, other than that, I mean, I think I've delivered most of what I was going to say. Uh, so these are these are the going back to like what I started on. So to go back a bit, uh, these are the uh, these are the methods that CCP uses to to brainstorm and to start designing uh, their products. Uh, it has worked very well for us. This does. Uh, I mean, this can cause a bit of uh, discouragement at first because at, once you start going into prototyping and you see maybe that your designs weren't as solid as you thought they were, you go into uh, brainstorming sessions and you get ideas that may be 
better solutions for problems you had than you had yourself.